Guys, nothing makes shooting more fun than getting back to the basics sometimes. And there's no better way to do it than the Ruger Blackhawk. We're gonna take a look at it today. All right, guys, let's start out here looking at the uh, sights. The rear sights are fully adjustable for windy tend elevation. They are, uh, they got the square notch in them. Same type that's found on my Ruger Mark III. So I'm already used to shooting these type of sights and I'll tell you what, I really like them. The front sight is just a ramped sight and I really like the way that it's the right width to fit into the square notch in the back. It leaves just a small amount of light on either side. It's really easy to line it up and get it centered. This little screw here on the side of the rear sight takes care of your windage, your, uh, your left and right adjustments. And of course, this other little screw here on the top will take care of your elevation. All right, guys, here's a look at the trigger and the hammer mechanism. Uh, the Blackhawk is a single action only, meaning you do have to cock it each time. Then the trigger just releases the hammer. A lot of people don't, uh, when I tell them that it's a single action and they're, they're like, oh, I have to cock it every time I shoot it. And I'm like, okay, well, I've got a double action over here. So I'll hand them a double action and they end up cocking it every time they shoot it anyway. It's just easier to shoot. The trigger's lighter, brakes clean. It's a lot easier to shoot than shooting one in double action. So, like I say, they end up shooting in single action anyway. Okay, here's a close-up look at the transfer bar system. You can see the bar right here that Ruger put into these, and, and that's when they started calling the new model Blackhawk. It was around 1973, I believe. They went back and even offered a retrofit for the older models because they were unsafe to carry with six rounds in the chamber, you didn't want to carry one with the, uh, a round under the firing pin, which is mounted onto the hammer. If something was to bump the hammer, it could go off. And I demonstrated that on a video I did last year on a couple old models that I had over here. All right, now if you've ever wondered why people only carry five rounds in a single action revolver and rest that hammer on the, on the empty chamber, I'm gonna show you. Now I've got a round loaded up in here and the uh, firing pin is actually resting on the round. The hammer's sitting on the firing pin. Now if you was to drop this gun or, uh, or something come up against it, there's a good chance this thing would go off. I'm gonna try to demonstrate that. I'm just gonna barely tap this hammer with this piece of wood. You can see my finger is not on the trigger. And I'm doing this in a safe direction. There's a big dirt bank down in here. Now as you can see, I barely hit that. It wouldn't take much of a bump at all to set one of these off. But uh, Ruger took care of that with this transfer bar system. The only way the gun can fire is when the transfer bar is in the up position and it won't fire unless the trigger is actually pulled. So this gun is safe to carry six in it. gun to shoot. Guys, this one happens to be, uh, it has to be wearing a 4 and 5 8 inch barrel and it's chambered in 357 Magnum. We're shooting a mix of 38 and 38 Special and 357 in it today. Those were 38s so I was just shooting. I was shooting uh, 357s in it earlier. But uh, they're available in a variety of calibers and several different barrel lengths. Well made gun. The grips on this gun they are a very, very good looking set of grips. They're plastic, I guess they're a plastic type grip, polymer or whatever you want to call it. Uh, got the little Ruger logo here, but they've got a good texturing on them. And for me, they're just the right size. Really like the way they feel. All right guys, this little gun is just begging me to shoot some tin cans with it. It don't get no more basic than that. I hear it, it's wanting some tin cans. Oh 
yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Well, if I had a uh, one more round, I think I could get him. <laughs> Man, that's great. We can't leave that one can sitting there unharmed. Let's take him out. There we go. Now, these guns can be had for less than $500 just about anywhere. And let me tell you, they're a tremendous value for what all you get. It's a rugged gun. It's going to last you several lifetimes. And they're just fun. I mean, it, you can't shoot this gun without, bringing it, without it bringing a smile to your face. The only controls you'll have to worry about on this little gun is the loading gate and the unloading rod here. The loading gate, when it's open, it actually keeps, it keeps the gun from being able to be caught, which is a safety feature. And of course, your uh, unloading rod here will, will knock your brass out, whichever one you've got located in front of the loading gate here. Okay, now takedown is really easy on this gun. You've got a button here. Just push in on that button. I can't see what I'm doing because I'm trying to show you guys on the camera. But uh, just pull out your takedown rod, open your loading gate, and your cylinder will just come right out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you went ahead and subscribe. Um, if you want a gun that'll take you back to a time when freedom and liberty were limited only by the distance that your horse can carry you in a day's time, you might want to go look at the Ruger Blackhawk. I'm going to see if I can get a couple hits on this steel at about 35 yards. We'll see you guys again soon. Oh yeah. Hey, you got to love it. Ah, got a miss. Oh man, stovepipe.